Thank you. My name is uh, Han Peters. I'm the ambassador of the Netherlands in this country. Um, I think without any doubt, the energy crisis is top of mind for most South Africans. So what's the plan of the EFF for ending load shedding? Thank you. Thank you very much. Number three. Uh, Mr. President, my name is Håkan Jur, the Swedish ambassador, and uh, since EFF is known as an international movement, uh, I would like to know more about your closest allied on the European and Asian continent when it comes to political movements that you share values with. Thank you very much. You may move over to number four. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, the invitation that we got from the EFF Amandla Pangwa from the, uh, as an insection of the Fourth International, we're an international organization. My question is just, uh, we, we, we've heard the CICs talking about the war that is happening and currently in Africa and our next door neighbor, we're having a war happening in Cabo Delgado in Mozambique which at this moment we can say uh, most of these countries that have come here, they are, are available there. If they avail their military presence, of which it's 34 countries, and most of them are there as combating terrorism, yet we know that it's about economic freedom because yet the youth of Cabo Delgado is fighting against the exclusion in terms of economic uh, 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 exclusion. But then I want to ask the EFF that, how are they supporting that struggle? My second question is that, we, we yesterday we just had the, the Banya Banya moment, mm. which was the, the Banyazing moment, which was promising young people stipends instead of permanent jobs and sustainability in the country. The third last question is that, as the EFF is the most formidable organization as the Fourth International, we have proven that through research and everything. How is it uniting the left? Because we know the left is arrogant and they living in their illusions. And we really, really, really plead with the EFF that you, can you really help them? Because they haven't come up into terms with the reality that the EFF is coming into power. And when we are in the government in waiting, you need to be very patient with these poor souls. How is the EFF going to garrison that? Thank you. Thank you very much. Over to you, President. Thank you very much. Um, with regard to the coalitions, um, our, our preferred approach would have been that we should consolidate all the opposition parties and then establish a new government and remove the corrupt ANC which has put us to where we are, all of us. But the problem is that you have a, an opposition parties that say we should come together to the exclusion of the EFF and there's no reason why. Um, because we have, we are not just saying we want to work with the opposition we gave the opposition power in the metros in 2016 against the ANC. We were the ones who removed the ANC. That's how much we've demonstrated our commitment to bringing an alternative government in South Africa. But the oppositions, when it was now the turn to include the EFF, they excluded the EFF. And worse, at the local level, because at the local level, it's not more about ideological questions. It's more about service delivery to our people. We can be Marxist and Leninist, can be right or left, but when people need clean water, it has got nothing to do with ideological question, deliver the water. And we are the only organization that have no public representatives that faces serious charges of corruption, of lack of integrity, of um, having sex in offices. None of our councillors has ever been found to have done that. 
uh, you can't accuse us of having involved ourselves in any corrupt dealings in any municipality, yet we are not wanted. Why? So when you leave the EFF out, you leave it with no op, you are actually pushing it to the ANC uh, 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 when coalitions come. And that's why we have opted to engage in the concoction you see in Johannesburg, in Igurulain and everywhere else because it, the, the ANC said, come here. We said, no, we're not coming. We're bringing everyone who can't work with you. We would rather work with you through other people, not you directly. And that's why we have not given that responsibility, which is a huge responsibility of mayorship to the ANC. We would rather give it to any other person other than the ANC. So we find ourselves in that situation. Um, we can end load shedding um, in South Africa. Firstly, you have to fight corruption. Uh, car power ships were signed a long time ago to come and intervene. But wives of ministers and ministers wanted to get their hands in, in those deals. And without them being involved, the deals fell flat. Mozambique has got a number of megawatts to provide to South Africa. As long as they don't have their hands in that, they will never approve of Mozambique's intervention to any additional megawatts to the grid is something positive to South Africa. And we are a nation with a serious crisis. We shouldn't even be thinking about ourselves as individuals. We should now be thinking about um, how do we get more energy into the grid and not about more money to me and my family. The coal power stations that were decommissioned will recommission them. Because you can't decommission a power station for green energy that gives you less than what that power station was giving you. It's illogical. We are all for green. We are all for clean energy but not at the detriment of the economy of South Africa. We cannot destroy our base to appease USA and the UK. Let's, if the green gives me 2,000 megawatts, whatever I'm going to decommission should be giving me 2,000 megawatts or even less. So I know I decommissioned this one and the alternative is this one and therefore I don't run short of what I'm requiring uh, to sustain the economy of South Africa and to give our people a reliable uh, electricity. So we also are going to stop this thing of taking out our clean energy, I mean our clean coal to outside countries and leaving us here with a dirty coal and being told we are polluting. The pollution, whether it happens in China, whether it happens in the UK, whether it happens in Germany, whether it happens in the USA, is going to affect us even here in South Africa. So why is there a story that we must not use coal in South Africa, yet we see tons and millions and millions of tons being taken out of South Africa? Where are they going? The story should not be, let's, de let's, let's decommission coal power stations. The story should be coal because is not clean and it's not good for the environment let's stop mining coal at all so no one uses coal it can't be that south africa must not use coal but other people are using coal it's wrong so there's no coal that is going to live here we are going to make sure that we produce enough and reliable and clean coal and will engage with our own allies in the form of China and all of to come with new technology to deal with emission. So we need to make sure that that which we say other people must not do, we don't do ourselves. Because to ask of us to self-destruct and use us as an experiment in exchange for money and to killing of our people, because this load shedding has killed a lot of people here in South Africa has killed a lot of businesses here in South Africa. And you can all feel it. Yet, we must be the first ones to be used as an experiment. 
you need a very firm leadership that will prioritize the interest of the country before any other thing and not sell the country to the highest bidder. Our alliances are naturally the leftist countries. China is one of the countries we look up to. Um, Cuba is one of the countries we look up to. And uh, Russia, we've got historical ties with it. We know that Putin is not uh, the left, but his attitude against imperialist forces um, finds resonance with the EFF. And those are the kind of people will rely on. BRICS is one such a structure that we regard very highly and uh, we see uh, the emergence of BRICS as an alternative platform to engage in the geopolitics. And those are the type of uh, progressive structures that the EFF uh, will align with. We, we make no apology with our alliance uh, with China because we believe that China can help us, even with load shading. Um, 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 uh, we need a government that has got interests and that negotiate good terms and say to China, build it, operate it, and hand it over to South Africa. The Chinese will never refuse to do that. They've never refused to do that. But because we are hell-bent, at our alliances with the West and America, we've missed opportunities to strengthen our own um, uh, economy through fostering working relationship with countries that will not uh, destroy us. China is not going to colonize Africa. The problem is your corrupt leaders who go to China with empty bags and come back with money. They want money and they negotiate with money in their mind. So if you come to me like that, I will also dribble you. So go there with proper ideas, not with corrupt mentality. There's no China that wants to colonize anyone. How, how do you get colonized now when you are the negotiator? South Africa has surrendered a port now in, uh, in Deben now. That's colonialism where you just take your port and give it to other people, surrendering your sovereignty, and later you are going to say people have colonized you. When you go to China and say, give us a power station in exchange for our Tambo Airport, why would they miss that opportunity? It's not them, it's your stupidity as leaders. No one, no, there is no policy of China we have gone through it many a times that seeks to colonize anyone. But if people go there with bad ideas, it's not a problem of China. It's their own problem. No socialist organization, and socialism teaches us that. But we can't engage in imperialist uh, uh, program. We can't engage in colonialist program. We intervene where necessary, and intervention does not mean interference. And that's what it inspires that relationship. Uh, uh, with countries like China and Cuba too. The Cubans, you go to them, you seek solution, they will provide it. And then they don't say, give us this, give us that. It's South Africa that says in exchange, we'll give you this. And when we give the Cubans the money that we are giving them, when we get accused, we over-explain ourselves that which we offered to the Cubans. The money to Cuba is not necessarily to pay for the doctors. It's a solidarity fund. We are in solidarity with Cuba and will double that money when we take over government. Because Cuba did not give us money. It gave us life. People died fighting for our democracy. Why should we be told by people who oppressed us that Cuba joined us to fight against how we must relate with Cuba? We cannot allow that. Um, the, the war in Mozambique is exactly what I spoke about. But the problem, you are right, is this foreign interests that are interfering and even sponsoring the killing of each other in, in Mozambique. We should not, as Africans, anywhere, because we are rejected, we are hated everywhere. 
we should not find it easy to fight with each other. It must be the most painful and the most difficult thing for an African to take up guns and shoot at another African. Because if others can do it, they will do it with easy. It must be difficult for us. We are hated everywhere in the world. We are treated like we are not human beings. Why should we treat each other like that ourselves? That's why the EFF here in South Africa is told every time that we won't vote for you because uh, you want foreigners in our country, you protect foreigners in our country, so be it. We're not going to kill Africans in exchange for votes. I would rather stay at home in the villages because that is not just us. So we are for Africans and Africans everywhere must always find African solution to their problems without Sassol's interference, without France's interference, without British interference, we need to sit down and find solutions of Africa by Africans and not this borrowed uh, 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 um, interference that we see all the time. So we are, we are aware of what's happening in Mozambique and we will make sure that the government of the EFF finds an African solution which is going to be permanent and not driven by foreign company or multinational companies' interest. Well, um, um, uh, Panyaza is doing what he has to do because he can see that the ANC is in danger. He's trying to, to save it. That is an act of desperation. Um, uh, uh, and it's not just an act of desperation but also humiliation. You are seeking a job, you are told to come to the stadium to come and take get your, 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 your appointment letter. You must all queue there uh, 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 to get in and all of that. It doesn't, it, it, there's no, NSD moment doesn't have dignity in it. Yeah, and, uh, and I think, and I'm happy you are raising it because our people should see it for what it is. It's an act of desperation. Uh, the last kicks of a dying horse they are very dangerous. Uh, that's why they are doing what they are doing. They are on their way out and they will do everything to clinch to power. But it's too late uh, in the day. They are out. The ANC rules Houting with 50.1% as we speak now. So they know that there is nothing they can do uh, that will make them win the elections next year. So they, they are going around hiring people, and then the next thing, if they don't give them stipend, even that stipend they are not getting. Uh, because there's a huge fight that people have been hired and they are not being paid. Because procedure is not being followed. And because you don't follow procedure, you are going to humiliate this many young people who are hungry uh, for jobs. The unity of the left is very paramount because capital is united. Uh, capital is united against the working class and the working class should come together. The left should come together. It's the business of the EFF to unite the left. And we're going to be very patient with them because by Avela, they are coming through. Uh, they are coming to realize that the only way to get the leftist perspective taking over this country is through the EFF. And uh, um, uh, like you said, um, it's not an easy and ideological position. It requires a lot of patience and a lot of explanation. And we'll bring them together and ultimately will emerge and become a better uh, country under the left forces. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much for your time to watch our videos and we appreciate everything that the party people are doing for us. And guys, uh, this video is about Malema and uh, I think uh, they have talked about their manifesto in this video. They have talked about what they will do in the table of power in South Africa. And um, we don't have much to say about this. We just want to hear from you. If you're watching us from South Africa, let's, let's see what you think about this video. Let's, let's see what you think about Malema. Let's see what you think about the 2024 May's election. Okay? And um, we want to wish everyone a um, peaceful, free, and fair election. 
uh, come in that date and let's do election fairly, let's elect our leaders that will lead us uh, the way we want them to lead us, not the way they want them to lead us. And um, I think uh, I would love to hear from you via the comment section and uh, today being on a Sunday, people should be going to church, okay? So let's go to church and pray because our, our African continent needs our prayers. We are going through a lot, by the way. The, our continent is going through a lot of things that only God can help us solve them. Okay? So I'll urge all of you guys to today, uh, you go to church, pray, tell him what you want him to hear. Because our countries and uh, our continent needs guidance from him. So that's why I will urge everyone to go and pray for our continent, Africa, because it needs all of us. I think I don't have much to talk about the video, but uh, today I will leave this video for every one of us who is watching here to tell me what you think about Malema's uh, speech, about the manifesto, uh, our continent Africa, and South Africa itself. So let's hear from you guys, and I want to leave this platform free. I don't want to take side in, in one way or the other, I don't want to take to, to speak like I own the speech of Malema, okay? That's why I left it for, for uh, that free for all of us to contribute, all of us to say something, okay? And let's meet again, guys, in our next videos.